income tax and dividends. We are progressing toward realistic accounts. We saw basic income statements and balance sheets. Here is an income statement. We have sales of 800. We can think of uh, millions of euros. We have the calculation of the COGS, we already saw. We have a gross margin, therefore, of 330 and various charges, salaries and fringes of 120, rent of 50, other operating charges of 40. We call them in the past shop expenses, but there may be some other things. Interest charges, if we have a loan here of seven, and amortization of the year of 50. This yields a result of 63. But to make this one income statement more real, we need to modify it a bit. Usually, the interest charges are presented after a first intermediate result called operating result here. So the 7 is down below this intermediate line. So we have an operating result of 70 and the result we just saw of 63. The reason is that the interest charges are not related to operations, but to the structure of liabilities, whether we have debt or not that is to the structure of financing. It may sound strange to say that interest charges are not related to operations, but two firms may have exactly the same assets and the same organization of production, so they may be exactly comparable. But one of them may be indebted and the other one not. This entails an extra charge for the indebted firm, even though they have the same operations. That's why we compute an operating result and they have the same operating result, if they are all the same in terms of assets and organization, but they will have different net result. Firms pay taxes on their result. They also pay VAT, value added tax, but this will be treated in another lesson. This tax on their result, it is called the income tax. It varies from 10% to 40% of the result before tax, which may be even less or even more. It depends upon countries, upon periods, upon the legislation specific to each industry. Let's take a representative rate of 25%. So our firm will have to pay 25% of this 63, and that will be the income tax. To have round numbers, let's assume that the income tax is 16. So the bottom line will be actually 63 minus 16, that is 47. And that will be the real bottom line. I will not change the explanation of the bottom line one more time in the future. The income tax is treated as a transaction made at the end of the accounting cycle after we've calculated the result before tax. It can be viewed li like this. Here's the firm, here's the rest of the world. During the cycle, the firm has consumed services from the community, and so it pays it with an OU of 16. The income statement becomes this the same trading account, the same operating charges that they are named, same in interest charges, and this income tax. So the net result is 47, the bottom line. The tax is not paid immediately after its calculation. First of all, it goes into the balance sheet as a credit to the state on the liability side, and it is payable a few months afterwards. Think of a cycle that ends up in, uh, at the end of December. First of all, it takes a few months to calculate, at least a few weeks, to calculate the income statement and ending balance sheet. And uh, that uh, takes place in uh, late February or March or April. And uh, typically, the income tax will be payable in September of the following cycle. The net result of 47 doesn't go entirely into the accumulated P&L on the liability side of the balance sheet, as we saw before. The firm board of directors or owners 
decide which part will be retained in the firm and which part will be distributed as dividends. Suppose the directors decide to distribute as dividends 27 and to retain 20 out of the 47 of the bottom line. Then in the, the ending balance sheet, the sigma PNL will increase only by 20, the retained earnings, and 27 will be re recorded at the bottom of, of the liability as due to the shareholders, and they are payable whenever the uh, directors decide. The dividends are also treated as a transaction. Here is the firm, here is the rest of the world, but more specifically the shareholders. Well, the firm, for the use of the capital put by the shareholders, pay every year some dividends, and this year it will pay with an IOU again 27. And as we saw, they are payable whenever directors deem it appropriate. Suppose the beginning balance sheet uh, was this, with assets and liabilities, and we already had on the liability side cumulated retained earnings of 50, capital of 300, there was a loan, uh, 100, and various things due to suppliers. And on the asset side, fixed assets, we are already familiar with machinery and van, and perhaps with long-term financial assets, but we also have buildings and land and a little bit of things called intangibles, which essentially are related to the cost at the foundation of the firm and things like patents. We shall study them later. And in the uh, current uh, assets, we have uh, the usual stocks, so 100 here, clients, 160, short-term financial assets to have our cash, our money work, and now I lump together cash and bank, and here it is 50. So we have a net debit of 530 and a net credit of 530. Then an evolution of the balance sheet with the IS in between may be this. I presented now the beginning balance sheet that we just saw in this uh, sketchy way. Uh, with intangibles, land, buildings, all the fixed assets, the current assets, and the liability that we just saw. Here is the income statement that we just studied. Uh, sales 800, opening stocks 100, purchases, closing stocks, the gross margin, the various operating charges, all of them here. These are called cash operating charges and these are non-cash operating charges. The result that we saw, operating results, also called result before interest and taxes. We saw the interest charges, the taxes, and therefore we saw the net result of 47. And we saw in our example that 27 are going to be distributed as dividends and the rest will be retained. So a new balance sheet may be this. And here, what we can check is that the uh, sum of the retained earnings went from 50 to 70 because of these retained earnings. For the evolution of the other items in the balance sheet, there are many more reasons for their evolution and we cannot explain them entirely with the transaction we just saw.